So, um, when we do qualitative research, okay, when we do qualitative research, kung quality din yan siya, we have to plan. Mm. Okay? Just because we just do interview, kasi there's the misconception na interview lang man yung quality. There's no map. Pero I assure you, it's as, ano din, it's as difficult. Okay, especially if you're not into words or bago ka palang sa words, it's going to be as difficult as tawag nito. It's going to be as difficult as quali. Okay, you also have to plan. Um, although, yes, there's no numbers, walang mga survey, but um, your data, for example, what if you need 10 interviews, tapos per interview is two hours each, you're, you're going to have to analyze those. Like, um, bawing bawi ka talaga sa interpretation, analysisation. So, of course, para hindi ka overwhelmed so that, you know, no effort is wasted um, and, you know, hindi ka ma-frustrate sa yung research, you, uh, you plan. Formulate your research question. This is very important. What do you want to explore? What, what questions do you want to ask? Okay. Is it practical? Okay, you assess practical, practical ba to? Okay, because may ibang ano, may ibang tawag na ito, may ibang qualitative or the researchers, okay ang question, pero it is not practical. For example, right now you want to conduct a practical study, okay, about the pandemic. Sige, sabi natin ngayon, ngayon kang, ngayon kang mag-research. That's not practical as of today because most probably your clients or rather your participants or respondents will will not will not agree to your study tapos sasabi mo face to face interpretation pa or mag-eethno ka makikitira kas kanila no so you have to access you have to assess rather your if practical ba yung research mo diba when we when we did quality diba napansin niyo we also did this no quality is it practical can we do this diba sino yung group before na who wants who wants to use food you know use food um, as one of their i uh, know as one of their important variables no so sabi ko sa inyo sabi diba i ask you if can you can you ano uh, can you can you all you know kaya ba sa budget inyo um you know bibili kayo ng the same food for four batches for how many treatment no so sabi ko kaya ba ninyo mo siguro more than 1k ang magiging ano ninyo budget yan okay so assess um if practical if feasible siya if doable okay it's also the same with ethical okay Ma'am, mag-interview na, uh, interview na lang din, ma'am. Does it, does it require your even informed consent? Yes. Especially sa interview, if mali ang mga question mo, if you're asking the wrong question or mali ang wording ng question mo, it could actually trigger traumas. It could actually trigger, uh, tawag nito mga negative feelings. Especially if you're dealing with mga psychological concepts, negative psychological concepts, grief, mourning, loss. Diba? These are just examples. That's why we have to be, you assess your ethical uh, feasibility din. Okay? And at the same time, tawag na ito, it's not only with the interview, you know, it's also, anong tawag na ito, in the middle. Kasi meron din yung mga ethics in the middle of the research. No, you cannot just uh, tawag na ito, force your participant kung ayaw na niya, kung ayaw na niya magpa-interview, ayaw na niya, you know, doesn't want to do anything with the research, it's okay na let go, let go muna lang si client. No? So these are the things that you have to, ano, these are the things that you have to take in mind. Okay, you have to note when you plan your research, di ba? Parang qualitative, eh, quantitative, di ba? Quantitative, ang dami ninyong preparation. Make sure everything is, ano. So, if you have the same level, no, the same level of preparation when you're, when you're doing quality, then that would be good. Okay? Everything will be okay. So, your data gathering, walang, walang, walang mishap mangyayari sa data gathering mo. You will not harm anyone. So on and so forth. Okay, and at the same time, you're also protecting yourself and protecting your participant. Okay, 
So when you formulate the research, research question, state the question of personal interest. Why do you want to study this? Okay. The, you, you may ask, this is because in qualitative research, this is actually important. Okay. A part of you becomes part of the study. You have to be open, maging transparent. Ka, because if you are not transparent, you will not build trust with your reader. And this is very important. Okay. And if you do not build trust with your readers, they will think that you just made up your result. And at the same time, you have to, I don't know, you have to state why you want to study this so that your participants will understand why you are doing this. For example, um, you're asking about depression, you're asking about trauma. Okay, trauma na nangyari during the pandemic. Of course, medyo ano yan, that's a very touchy subject. But if your participants know na makakatulong yan, if your participants know that you're doing this to help, you're, that you're doing this to help other people, you know, giving them a voice, no, you want to you want to allow them to talk it out. Then that's okay. Pero if you, if if hindi nila makita na yung personal interest mo, why are, why are you studying this? There's no trust. So you have to be transparent, diba? You also see the question of theoretical import importance and social significance. A theoretical importance, no. Again, this is again to help. This is again to tawag nito. Hopefully, to validate or to anong tawag nito. I mean, we cannot totally validate or disprove a theory, but rather, hopefully, we can we can contribute. Ang magiging researching, you can actually contribute to a good theory. Okay, for example, the theory. Meron, I'm sure, marami yung mga theories regarding trauma healing, regarding healing, regarding forgiveness. Okay, so. You also, you also have to state that, state the question of theoretical importance. Why is it important that you contribute to this certain branch of knowledge, that you contribute to this theory? And of course, anong social significance neto? Because if you uh, what you call this, you have to establish that at the end of the day, your research will be very helpful. Your research can be a catalyst for change. Okay, and they and they will be willing to participate. Because if nakita nila for your own curiosity lang yan, you know, na sayang lang sila ng oras, they will think this is just a waste of time, you no? Know? Because remember, other people have their realities. They can do. They should be doing other things. But the fact that ibibigay niyang time natin is actually a very ano, it's actually tawag nito a big thing na for us, a big thing for them. Okay, so we. They are informed by, uh, we should be informed, they should be informed by a thorough review of the related literature. We have the RRL, okay? And this is very important. When we do quality research, especially if you are driven, you are driven by the theory, uh, magbasa ka talaga na maraming RRL. So that when you do enter the field, when you do start your quality, you know what are the researches, uh, you know the results before you. And when you know, okay, ano yung sinasabi ng previous research, you can actually, you can, may, parang may guide ka ba? For example, addiction. Addiction is a process, addiction is progressive. It's easier for me to code that because aside from experience, there's research that actually, that actually, uh, neto that is actually published, okay, and says and states that addiction is really progressive. Hindi yan siya in a snap na addict, addicted ka na. Hindi yan siya in one night or in one week addict ka na, no. Okay, so with that, I entered the field, okay, at yung mga concepts na nabasa ko sa RRL, so on and so forth, I am more prepared. I know terminologies na ginagamit ng, ano, ng mga... Anong tawag nito ng uh, participants ko? I also know, okay, I also can empathize with them. No? I can also understand bakit ganito nangyayari sa kanila. Because I am equipped with the RRL. And you should also be equipped with the RRL. That's why at first you might think na decoration lang. To. No, RRL is actually very important. 
so that hindi ka walang wala sa field, especially in qualitative research. Very, uh, it's very important that you are knowledgeable when you enter the field or when you enter the topic that you are going to explore, because you will miss a lot of things if you don't. You, you, for example, you want to discuss forgiveness. Eh, wala kang kaalam alam sa forgiveness. Okay, you did not really do a thorough study of forgiveness. You might actually miss important details about forgiveness. You might think denial, ay, hindi man to part sa denial, wala man, who still gets who faces denial during, during forgiveness? If you don't, if you don't, ano, if you don't um, know that, Medyo ano yan, medyo sayang, sayang ang mga data, di ba? So, in formulating the research question, you state, you must be prepared to state the question of personal interest, theoretical importance, social significance, and be informed through your RRL, okay? And state the specifics. Who are your participants? Sino hinahanap mo? Di ba in the subject, if you still remember when you, when you did your application, you have to defend bakit mga teenagers, bakit mga adults, okay? Bakit, bakit mga bata, okay? You have to specify and why. For example, depression within teenagers, why? Why them? Because, because mommy, it's a sensitive period actually sa, ano, sa kanila, they're actually prone Okay, they're actually responsive to possible triggers of depression. Okay, that's good. Okay, ma'am, bata ang gusto namin. Why? Because we want to explore, you know, child-adolescent onset of, of depression. Okay, that's good. So you have to specify why. Bakit sila? Okay. Next, where? Where are you going to set your interview? Are you going to explore? Kayo ang pupunta? For sure, dapat kayong pupunta. Ito yung ano kasi sa qualitative. If sa quanti, sila ang pupunta sa laboratory, sa qualitative, you should be the one to adjust this time. Um, you have to specify a place or a setting no, where they are comfortable. Okay? If comfortable sila meeting you in a cafe, coffee house, Bakit coffee house? Sa akin kasi, coffee house, my participants were attending NAAA meetings nila, Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous meetings nila in coffee houses. And they are, um, they are tawag nito, they are comfortable there. Kasi yung, yung parang safe space nila eh. And it's also good for me kasi when I almost ran out of participants, yung feeling ko parang hala hula pa ng participants, when pumunta ako doon sa coffee house nila, you know, they started, ano, na doon, meron pa doon ibang mga possible respondents na pwede kong ilagay. Some of them even wanted to be part of the study nung nakita nila na, hala, interview lagi siya. Can I also be, can I also tell my story? That happened actually. Okay. Although this, uh, although hindi ko masyado nagamit data niya, but her data was really helpful in my study. There were specific teams din na lumabas kahit hindi siya, tawag na ito, hindi siya full-blown one hour kasi sa kanya nagpa-interview siya 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I think she wanted to also engage in talk therapy. You know, she wanted to share her story kasi she did not fit. She was a respondent that did not fit my criteria. But I entertained her kasi she wanted to also help now. She also wanted to be part of the research. Hindi ko naman diniscard ang data niya because it was actually helpful. The respondents I was looking for dapat 10 years na sober. She was not sober for 10 years. Pabalik-balik siya inong, pabalik-balik siya gamit. She would, when I interviewed her, she was only sober for a month. A month or two. Pero I still entertained her. Kasi dito, nakita ko that relapse is real. Dito ko nakita ang relapse. You know, this. she actually wanted to share her stories of relapse. No, And she wanted, I think she wanted also a sign. She also wanted someone, you know, to, um, you know, help her, you know, um, continue her journey, you know, and she wanted to share her story na ang hirap talagang parilaps ng relapse, okay? So, the setting is very important. Sa qualitative, you have to, ikaw na talaga mag adjust okay? Unless si client nagsabi, okay, and unless si participant nagsabi na, sige, ikaw bahala, saan tayo? 
Pero if you are going to conduct interviews, it would be better if they, if sila ang ano, if sila ang tawag nito, if ikaw pupunta sa kanila. Because remember, um, during interviews, it would be better if they are comfortable. Okay, pero of course, if you think na you are uncomfortable with a certain respondent, sabi niya doon sa bahay nila, if you're still uncomfortable with that, you can ask someone to assist you, be there for you. You know, that's in case, there's nothing wrong with that because you, you have to protect yourself. Okay, when you have to give your participants letters, kasi in my case, yan din ginawa ko, you have to give them letters. You have to talk to them. Okay, hindi pwede mag-letter ka lag. You have to get, really meet them personally. When are they available? Why? Because, anong tawag nito? Um, they are not, uh, tawag nito, like I said, they all have their realities. They, one hour for them might be too long. Okay? One hour, they could do a lot of things. Makapahinga na sila from work. Maka, you know, they could chat with their friends, prepare for their NAAA meetings, okay? In cases naman sa inyo, they could be studying kung mga students, especially mga bata, di ba? You have to be specific. You have to be specific. Do you think, at the, do you think mga hapon? Okay, do you think mga hapon? Do you think that would be a good time to, ano, to deal with the children? For those na, na ano, for those na um, who had children as respondents, for sure they know they know the feeling na paghapon. For sure, walang wala na yung mga ano yun, attention, <laughs> attention ano nila, ano to? Um, yun, attention in terms of ano and focus rather sa ilang study. Okay, so you have to be specific then, specific time. And and kung hindi mo naman mas specify ang time, at least may specific time frame ka. Okay, so you have your, so that your part, your participants can also be ready. Hindi naman pwede, okay, can we do it tomorrow? Can we do it later? Okay, so dapat prepared ka talaga. You have to be prepared. So prepared, you can say a week from now. Because maghahanap pa yan sila. In most cases, maghahanap pa yan sila ng free time. You might say it's just an interview. You know, they also want to be prepared for that. Okay. How? Specific methods. You also have to formulate this. Anong gagawin mo? Interview ka ba? Are you going to do observation? Are you going to also interview their family members? What are the procedure, procedures sorry, of data collection, data management, and analysis? Mag-memory work ka ba? Are you going to do discursive, etc.? So, parang ano lang ba? If you've noticed, it's just a review. Okay, of what we, uh, of, anong tawag nito? of preparation, of preparing for, before our data analysis. I do apologize for the chicken. Let's go. So, yun. Practical feasibility. We have your participants, equipment. What do you notice? This is parang nag-prepare lang kayo. This is just a review of what we did. Okay, what we did. No, exp no experimental psychology. Participants, di ba? Some of you, kumuha talaga ng list, nag-random sampling kayo. You can also do that sa quali. Pero again, it depends. Kasi sa quali naman, uh, most of the time, purpo purposive siya. Most of the time, kunti lang talaga participants sa quali. Unless you're doing ethnography, okay, or doing other ano, conversation analysis. So, pwede yan siya. It depends. It, again, it depends on the size. For in most cases, medyo mga 10, five, so on and so forth, ang, ano, ang participants mo. But that doesn't mean that hindi ka na mag-prepare. You have to prepare letters. You have to prepare informed consents. You have to talk to them. Okay? Kasi, for sure, magtataka sila, ano to? Interview about their sexual life. Interview about their trauma. Okay? So, you have to really, ano, you really have to build rapport with your participants. No? If quantitative pa lang, you know, na-feel dyan na may iba, ma attitude na during the quantitative. How much more pa sa qualitative? Since you are asking very personal, especially if you're asking very personal ano, questions. Okay. Sige. Equipment, materials, ato. Dapat fully charged yung phone mo. You have a working phone. You have a working recorder, video recorder. 
are doing are you going to be in a laboratory Kasi, for example, if you want to observe them, okay, sila to go into a laboratory for you to observe, make sure your programs, recording programs are okay. Diba? Sabi ko sa inyo, kung mga folders ninyo, dapat may folder kayo per document, materials. And, of course, when we talk about materials, nandiyan na ang cost, finances. In certain quality, especially pag ethno ka, action research ka, pwede yan very, ano, if very it could be, it could be very expensive okay i had a master's classmates now um, a master a classmate ko sa masters okay her budget sa research umabot na nang 100,000 and siya lang isa yun and may assistant kasi may assistant pa siya pero you know um you might ask pa bakit ang laki ng budget if you're doing action research if you're doing especially quality or Mangi discourse ka, or you are, or, or rather, ang ano mo, ang participants mo, or setting mo is a community, and you want to help bring about change. Um, may iba mahal, yes, can be expensive because their reward is to actually help the community. For example, um, you want to, ano, you want to help create, um, you want to create, help create a sustainable feeding program for them kasi gina explore mo you know gina explore mo ang ang mga bata okay gina explore mo if children from that place would rather go to school when they are fed okay so nag ano ka you observe them what uh, anong tao na ito na yung mga tapos you also observe ang mga um uh, nutrition na binibigay ng parents okay so it's going to be expensive kasi for sure ikaw magpapaka and you're also going to give them a program you're also hopefully going to give them materials for to sustain so that pag alis mo hindi sila walang wala pag alis mo you actually help them especially this actually happens especially sa mga ano when the research and setting the research is mga poverty stricken communities so it could be really expensive Okay, or if your budget goes to a certain group, example, nag donate ka ng 50,000, nag donate ka ng 10,000 sa isang group that wants to, ano, wants to help, tawag nito, wants to help um, orphans. Kasi kailangan nila. Ikaw din, kasi actually as a researcher, ikaw din, you're also going to want to help. No, kinomo time nila, so on and so forth. So para may reward ka, or may mga bother fees ka. Okay, so that when you leave, hindi ka lang naging ano ba, hindi ka lang, you didn't just come and go. Okay, parang you stayed there, you really helped them. Okay, pero of course that doesn't mean na ano, that doesn't mean na tawag neto, it all applies. Kasi, pero I do, I do agree that you have to prepare your cost finances kasi, no, nagsadi ako sa masters. I'm not gonna be surprised if five thousand to ten thousand na nagastos ko sa qualitative research ko. Kasi I had to give ano, I had to give food to my to my respondents, no? Quality food. Kasi ato mga bigatin to sila na participants, no? I I took a lot of their time. I also tapos ang magpatranscribe is one k, one k, two k. It depends on the quality pa magpatranscribe. I'm printing since I have almost 300 pages and I keep and times three. Can you imagine? I print them times three for my panelists. So, can, so just imagine na lang, just imagine na lang the finances. So, you really have to prepare for that. Pilot work. Okay. Pwede di kayo mag pilot work. You can also, tawag neto, you can also decide. Who are your if okay bang mga interview questions mo, especially in qualitative, which I will show uh, later. Sample size and your timetable. Of course, we all know timetable is very important. Okay, I, and I think you all agree, especially nung nag experimental kayo nag ano kayo na replicate kayo. Timetable is very important. There's a timetable to get your data. Time there's a time to analyze it, a time to to do the discussion, so on and so forth. Diba? Kasi if wala kayong timetable, medyo, ano yan, magulo talaga yan. Mag, mag, you will be rushing. 
you will be procrastinating. Yun nga, participants, are they available? Are they willing? Okay, what if, anong gagawin mo if hindi sila compliant? Who, who, sino, who will replace them? Especially kung kunti lang talaga sila. Confidentiality. The role of gatekeepers. Ito mga gatekeepers, these are the people that could actually help you look for your respondents. For example, ang mga gatekeepers ko were actually, were actually tawag nito. were actually my fellow clients sa rehab. I ask them, sino ang leader ninyo? Sino ang nagiging ang leader ninyo? Sino yung you think na okay ang record? Uh, you know, trustworthy no? na leader sa NAAA ninyo. Do you know someone who is 10 years sober? Do you know someone na 10 years na hindi gumagamit? They actually, they actually, ano, they actually help me. I, ato ma'am, try, try mo to ma'am, si ganito, si ganyan. Then there's another gatekeeper, which is the leader the leader of the NAAA meeting who and thanks to that ano, thanks to that gatekeeper aside from naging respondent ko siya he actually helped me identify more respondents kaya siya gatekeeper di ba they actually they actually hindi naman sa protect but rather they actually know people they actually try to gatekeep um, the group okay and if they think you know, you are trustworthy if they think na okay ang cost mo, okay ang, uh, okay ang research mo, they will actually help. Pero pag nakita nila eh, manggugulo lang to sa group, they're not gonna entertain you. That's why you have to also, ano, you also have to, you know, treat your gatekeepers well. Okay, that's, i, ano, bigyan nyo talaga sila ng token. You really have to be open with them. Kasi, Especially, ato pa mga pre, mga ano pa to. You have, I have, I have to be careful. You have to be really honest and really open and sincere sa kanila, because these are ano, these are um tawag nito, these are previously persons with so uh, with substance use disorder and alam na nila yung mga magsisi, alam nila makadetekyan sila kung sino nagsisi ng sisong ane, sisi ng aling, because they have done it themselves. Okay. So if you get, gain the trust of your gatekeepers, everything would flow smoothly. Okay, but like I said, treat them well. Okay, and what is our ethical responsibility to participants? Always talaga ethics. Will this question harm them? So on and so forth. And ethical responsibility, protection and welfare. Make sure na hindi mati trigger. Make sure that your presence will not steer more trouble, more problem than they are already in. Okay, protect them. Make sure your questions sa interview ninyo are well made so that, and at the same time, okay ang facilitation interviewing skills ninyo. So that if ever you open the Pandora's box, I think term namin, Pandora's box, because each and every one of us, especially pag kunting trigger lang, what if biglang iiyak, biglang magpo-flow lahat ang catharsis. If you are not equipped for that, no overwhelm ka, matatakot ka. But if you know how to facilitate, for example, during the interview, umiyak. During the interview, nagalit siya, nag siya. If you know how to facilitate that, then that is good data. Then you actually you are actually protecting. Pero if not, okay, you have to prepare yourselves. Example, you really want to, ano, you really want to explore depression, you really want to explore trauma. Dapat before the interview, you are well equipped. Okay ang questions mo. You are well equipped with skills that can facilitate, okay, that can counsel, do mini counseling. Kahit, kahit hindi 100% counseling, at least you know what to do if ever iiyak sila. Okay? And if you think na hindi mo din kaya, or if you think that it's getting overwhelming, okay, you can try to stop on the interview, you can just listen to them, okay, and resume when they are okay. Okay? Inform consent, I don't have to ano, I don't have to discuss on this too much. Make sure that your clients are willing. Diba? Ano yung ulit yung mga inform, anong ulit nilalagay sa inform consent ninyo? Just your study. You should know your study. For what, what are they going to get from participating in your study? And the, ano pa yung mga rules, you know, that they are okay to withdraw. If they want to withdraw, they could just talk to you. Atong number three ang, ano, ating number three ang nagiging issue sa ano, 
nagiging issue sa qualitative. Okay, can you ask for sponsors? Uh, what do you mean sponsors? Um, I mean, ano yan? Um, uh, uh, um, sorry, ang yeah. kagina, ma'am sa question ko about sa um, sa poverty stricken lang nga, ano ma'am? Oo, uh, 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 uh. Amo na ma'am, kung pwede ka ask a sponsor, but like, um, para hindi ka mag-ask to, 100k as you said, kaya gina sa, ano mo ma'am, sa acquaintance mo. Oo, uh oo. -uh, uh -uh. Okay ma'am, is it allowed? Basta okay si sponsor. Okay naman. Okay, so if you have a sponsor sa imong research, that's actually good. That's actually better. Kasi may mga ganyan din. So thank you for the question. In doing research, quantitative, qualitative, it's there uh tawag nito you can actually have sponsors kasi para hindi mabigat din sa inyo of course when you talk about sponsors baka may mga conditions din yan sila okay you the advertisement of a certain of a certain product okay anong role nila ganyan so that's okay okay at least ang maganda sa sponsors if you if you have sponsors mas mas nare reach out you reach out a lot of ano you reach out a lot of tawag nito a lot of connections and mas nakakatulong ang research mo you know that your research will be ano will be you know hindi siya in vain kasi nakatulong na sa community the sponsors will also use your research for the better okay so it's good in my case um ndrc was not really my sponsor Pero in a way, naging sponsor sila because they allow me not to go to work. They still pay me even I am not in the office. They allow me to do, ano, they allow me to use their records. Okay. Para mas madali ang ano ko. Mas madali, uh, mapa, mas mapadali ang research ko. In return, I give them a copy of my research. Okay. So, and at the same time kasi ano nangyari? Um, follow up. Does the government sponsor researches? I haven't tried, pero pede you can try, especially yun nga, with poverty stricken communities. Pede, pede, I think pede ka magpa sponsor. Yun lang, you have to, it all starts with submitting a letter. It all starts with, you know, getting approval to whoever will, I know, whoever will, you think will sponsor you or getting connections. I haven't tried getting a, a sponsor from the government, but that would be better, especially, like I said, especially some of poverty stricken communities. But I think you can ask if you really want a sponsor, siguro, pag okay na siguro ang pandemic, tapos na sa thesis na kayo, try asking siguro si Sir Daryl, baka may mga connections yan siya, you know, kasi baka, or may connections siya to connections. Okay. Sige. So you can you can pwede kayo magpa-sponsor pero make sure na ano ha whatever conditions they're going to have the money they'll be giving to you make sure you use it wisely. Kasi it entails trust. Again, you have to be you have to be transparent even with your sponsor. Kasi they are they're also looking forward sa inyong research and of course you have to do your research well. So para may added pressure siya. Pero yes, you can ask for sponsors. Okay, so quantitative research for both quantitative research, field research, or qualitative. Okay, so thank you very much for that question. At least na ano tayo ba? Na, you know, there's hope na yes, hindi tayo, hindi lang tayo, hindi tayong gagastos ng 100K if ever, if ever it comes to that, at least there's hope na may mga sponsors. And sa akin lang, it would be better if, you know, ma ma sponsor not uh, it will be better if money goes to researchers if money goes to research kasi tingnan mo ang dami ngayon ang daming problema ngayon that could have been avoided if if everyone read researches actually before i went online nakita ko sa facebook ano to behind a modern sabi din nakita ko behind a modern day crisis is a scientist being ignored a research being ignored atong covid there was actually a science may mga scientist group of scientists na pala who actually who actually tawag nato who actually made a research about covid 
And there was even, he predict na din nila, there was even the prediction, I'll try to look for that. There was even the prediction, 2007 pa yung study, pero there, were, there was already a prediction that the COVID sa mga bats, if not taken care of properly, if in, if if ever makontinue yung certain practices, it's actually a time time bomb. And true enough, it exploded. Diba? And a lot of people are actually suffering. So, I do hope there's ano ba, there's this anong tawag nito there's this um uh, need you know lahat tayo ba lahat especially in our country the need to the need for research can you imagine tawag nito in CPU there was there was one ano I think there was one university from Myanmar or Thailand Thailand I think there was one visitor they're actually willing na maki ano they're actually willing to sponsor a teacher, a faculty, or a researcher to do research sa ilang sa, sa country nila. No, you'll have accommodations, you'll have food, and all you have to do is complete research. Diba? Kap na travel ka na, naka travel ka na din. Diba? So I do, and, and the irony of it is ibang country pa ha, sa ibang country pa. So I do hope na, you know, in the Philippines, me, ano ba, there's, people will see the need for research. So that, kasi what do you notice? The reason I'm saying this, naman marami namang research, but the, the reason I'm saying this is, are there enough research that applies to the Filipinos? Diba? Most of what we are using is Western, Western based, Western ang ano, Western ang perspective. But hopefully, kayo, even you know the future, the future researchers, you know, will be you know will will be helpful. Oh, makita ng makita ng country that there's really a need for more researches, especially sa psychology. Can you imagine when I went to the library no college pa ko, masters pa rather. Umutal sa library sa tito Sabi ko, I need I need RRL. Pagpasok ko doon ang dami RRL the Western. But in looking for what I need, isa lang na libro ang sa Filipino research. So, like, ano ito? It's like, there's this sense of sadness ba na? Ha? Ito lang ang ano? This is what I have to work with? And sa libro, isa lang nakita ko na research that's applicable in my RRL that could help me in my research. Okay, so I do hope pagtagal, pagtagal where there will be more published. Kasi yung, yung, yung book na yun, yun yung mga published research. There are still researches. Yes. There are still research, uh, mga research uh, journals na from, ano, from Filipinos, from students. Pero what I needed that time was published. Lahat ay nagtitesis. Yes, lahat ay nagtitesis. Lahat ay gumagawa ng research. Pero how many are getting published? Most of, kaya it also saddens me most of the time nasa, ano lang yan, nasa, tawag neto, nasa library lang. Kasi yes, we do have a lot of research, pero if editors, kunti lang mga editors, kunti lang ang mga, you know, pumapasa, kunti lang um, mga journalists who are willing to publish research talaga, especially sa site pa, you know, then the best thing we could do is to keep going is to keep doing research okay anyways before i before i get ano, before i get lost the briefing uh, ato, the use of deception is another ano, is another issue kasi ethnography yun ang criticism sa ethnography are you going to be open to your ano, are you going to be open to your participants tell them that you're a researcher you want to just research your daily lives because for sure it will affect their behavior okay they will show they will show their best foot forward but in some cases in some cases it actually works may ibang mga groups na bahala kayo bahala, bahala ka dyan researcher basta kami meron kaming gagawin and you want that you want that they still go about their daily lives not minding you too much no because you want what's going on but in most cases kasi pag nasa group ka Lalo na pag, you know, alam nilang they're being observed, they will do things, no? papakita nila yung best foot forward nila. Pero it's another key, it's another issue, kasi if you're going to use deception, tapos malalaman nila, hala, all this time researcher ka, all this time you were a spy. That's, ano, that's going to be a big problem. 
lalo na pag nagalit sila or lalo na if they were not okay that you were spying or you were observing them without their consent. Kasi, privacy. Ang mayayari niyan kasi, if you do use deception, especially 100% deception, wala kang informed consent. Which I will show you later sa ethnography. So, this is a question. If you're going to use, di ba, ano yung ginawa natin, ginawa natin sa qualitative, quantitative na experiment niyo. If you're going to use deception, may debriefing kayo dapat. You have to tell them, and you have to give them a token. You have to tell them why you had to do this. If ever they were not okay, there should be a session, you know, for them for them to understand. There should be a session a, to facilitate their negative emotions. You know, there should also be a reward. No, in short, dapat makabawi ka talaga sa kanila for using deception. Pero yun nga, I suggest if you're going to use deception, wag naman 100% na wala ng informed consent. Uh, kasi yun nga, assess the ethical feasibility of your research. Okay, and also ask yourself, ato, is deception lang ba talaga ang pwede kong gamitin? What are ways that I could get my data without harming, without offending, without hurting my participants? The right to withdraw Yes, you should, ano, you should acknowledge, you should accept na even in qualitative, if ayaw na nila magpa-interview, ayaw na nila magpa-follow up interview, then that's okay. Okay, invasion of privacy, yun nga, it's because of the, um, it's because of, especially if you use deception, or if you demand na okay, dapat during work times, I will, is, is it okay if I follow you during your work? Is it okay if I observe you during work? Kasi ethnography, ganun, there are, there are actually researches that, See, researcher would actually follow, would hang out with the participants. So you have to, no, you have to be clear. If they're okay, na pupunta ka sa work nila, pupunta ka in certain places they are, they go there. You have to get their side. If okay sa nila, kasi kita nila na it's for the good or whatever reason they have, they're okay with it. Make sure it's in paper, okay? Ato ba the Informed consent, debriefing, the right to withdraw, invasion to privacy. Make it sure it is documented to also protect yourself. Because what if there will come a point, magalit sila sa you? Tapos sabi nila, bakit pa ako nagri research? You know, you're invading my pro my privacy. Pwede kita kasuhan. But if you have the document na, ma'am, sir, uh, I do hope na you still remember that you signed a paper, you know, that you were okay with this. Pero you have the right naman to withdraw. So you protect yourself from, ano, you also protect yourself from mishaps. So document everything. So if they say na, okay lang, sige, okay lang sa akin, pumunta ka sa ba, you also have to document that. Ilagay mo sa informed consent nila. Kasi what if pumunta ka sa bahay nila, tapos nagalit sila. Diba? At least, at least you have the document. Next, confidentiality and anonymity. This is very important, especially if you're, ano, especially in my case, can you imagine? I was interviewing previous drug pers personnel, <laughs> previous drug, ano, users. No, so of course, tina, uh, sin, ano na, wala na yung, ano, iniba ko ng pangalan nila agad. Okay. When I, when I finished my research, ibang pangalan, there was no trace, there was no trace of the real name talaga sa research ko. Okay. And I had to, although pinakita ko lang ang informed consent, pinakita ko informed consent ko sa ano, sa panel, after that, I had to get rid of it. Okay. Kasi confidentiality yan. You already got your data. You don't need to, ano, you don't need to tawag neto. You don't need to put them in more harm. Kasi what if bigda ka na lang, what if you were careless, na wala yung document mo na doon para pangalan nila. So, it might cause trouble. And remember, they open up about certain things. They open about cheating. They open about stealing. So, you really have to protect them. Okay? Important is they post no harm, direct harm. They post no current harm to you or to the community. Pero if you think during the interview, ay medyo, ano, medyo, medyo delikado to na, ano, medyo delikado pag maano, you have, you have to, ano, there's a breach of confidentiality. You really have to report, especially 
during the interview, example, nagalit siya, there's trauma. I want to kill my parents. I want to kill my sister. I want to kill them. So I really have to, we, we really have to report to protect the other party. So doon na yung limit ng confidentiality natin. Okay? And anonymity. Yun ang ginawa ko. An anonymous. I changed their names. There were no specific names sa, sa, ano nila, sa stories nila. Person A, person B, si brother, si mother. So, and even in your surveys, di ba? When you do your surveys, you don't put, okay, ito yung answer ni, ano, ni ganyan, from second year psych, stub code, ganito. Like, no, keep it, keep it anonymous. Okay. Sige. To protect their right, to protect their, ano, to protect their privacy there. Sige. Next, of course, we have the PAP Code of Ethics, and I think na review the din to sa inyo, um, nila Sir Prince. Okay, so yan, um, tawag nito informed consents, um, offering inducements, deception, debriefing, reporting results, and plagiarism. These are all ano, these are all tawag nito self explanatory. And when we mean inducement, these are these are a thing or things that persuades or influence someone to do something. So when you do offer mga rewards, when you do offer tokens, uh, wag naman tayo, medyo abusado ha. At the end of the day, um, benef beneficence ang ano natin, ang value natin. We take care of the well-being of others. Okay. Pero if we're, uh, anong tawag nito? Like I said, kaya, kaya, yeah, there's a need for sponsors. There's a need to really spend a lot, especially if your inducements will help the community. Okay? So, you know, deception, debriefing, reporting results. When you also report your results, there should be confidentiality. If unnecessary naman, if there's no need to put names, do not put their names. Okay? Uh, um, anong tawag neto? Use the right terms as well. Okay, do not, as much as possible, do not put your participants in a bad light and more harm than usual. Okay, because what if the meeting and results against them? So if negative, hindi maganda ang results mo, construct it in a way, use RRL, construct it in a way that people will, will understand. Okay, because we don't want to do more harm. Yun talagang ethics natin. We don't want to do harm our participants. That's why we do research. Is because the end the end goal is to help them, to help them in the program, to help them during the research, to help them even after the research, and to help them with the research using our research. And of course, plagiarism is very self-explanatory. Do not. You know, na, do not, please do not steal, do not borrow someone else's idea without citation. Okay, because that's actually a legal, ano na, a legal, um, tawag neto, a legal issue. So, eh, so pwede, in short, pwede ka nakasuhan if and when. Kahit siguro 10%, 20% lang yung plagiarize, 16, no, even just 10%, 5%, you just copy paste then. That's actually stealing already. That's already a big ano, legal, legal mistake on your part. So please, please paraphrase, paraphrase, kahit masakit sa ulo. Think of it this way. Masakit sa ulo mag-paraphrase, masakit sa ulo mag-citation, pero mas masakit ang ulo mo, masasakit ang ulo mo if you have been, if you have been, tawag neto, if you have been called out for plagiarism. Mas masakit ang ulo pag you're facing a court, anong tawag mo, pag nakasuhan ka na. Okay, so I always tell myself kanya na, Kunting, kunting discipline, kunting discipline, kunting pain lang to, kunting, kunting ano lang to, temporary lang to mag-paraphrase versus a lifelong consequence of being, you know, of being, of being filed a case for plagiarism. Diba? So, yun na lang. Data collection, again, if you notice, it's more on, ano, this is a, ano, this what we had to exercise. So, tawag nito. 
mostly in qualitative in qualitative tawag nito in qualitative studies mostly you select your participant purposely okay what do you mean if you remember purposive who are the participants that will fit nahanap ang mga participants that will fit your study if you're looking for if you're looking for adolescent with childhood onset depression if you're looking for um, people with substance use disorder that have been sober for 10 years you have no choice per, but to use purposeful or per, purposive selection you have to look for them may criteria ka, may hinahanap ka sa eh. if you're looking for a respondents wait lang if you're looking for respondents that have experience who are psych majors na etc etc hello ma'am really hello sige yes. hi sige sige Can you continue with your work lang basta you read lang on ano follow up ka lang you just read the after the recording lang sige, yes ma'am okay ah. sige as you not talk lang Sige. So, pamit lang ko. Pamit lang ko so that <laughs> ma hindi ako distract So, again, purposive mostly ang qualitative. You have to, and and what you notice, select sites that will best help understand the research, research question. If, uh, tawag nito, setting where, who are your actors, the events, and the process changes in what. So, you really have to take note of all of this. In my case, I was looking for tawag nito, yung people, uh, uh, people who are 10 years sober who have not been using drugs for the past 10 years. And drugs, for them, kasi may terminology yan sila eh. Drugs does not only mean shabu. Kung pwede, they do not also drink alcohol. Ikaw na din, it's, you're also called as a researcher if you don't, if you, if you include mo pa yung iba, nag-smoke pa. Pero nicotine is technically a weak drug, but it's still a drug. So in my case, naghanap talaga ako yung sober talaga. Hindi na talaga umiinom. Hindi umiinom, hindi gumagamit. Not even smoke. Okay? So you have to, ano, you, you must have your, ano, you must have your criteria. Buti nakahanap pa ako ng time sa Davao because I actually realized na it's really, ano, it's really, rare lang to talaga sila eh. But they are actually the source of the rich data from my thesis. Setting, yun. like I said, kung saan sila comfortable and better yet, kung saan it is where you can also get more respondents. Okay, actors, your um, participants. Be careful what are the events they have. Ako, I, I have to, ano, I have to adjust to their schedule. If ang sabi nila they are free five to six. Hindi ako free 5 to 6. I have to be free 5 to 6. Okay? I have to leave work. If free sila 4 to 5, I have to leave work early. Because, because, tawag na ito, if I go beyond 6, they have meetings. They have meetings that they attend. And these meetings, atong NAAA meetings, sila, hindi ko to pwede galawin. Why? Because these meetings are the meetings that help them remain sober. So you have to look out for them. What are the events? So that you can time your data collection. For example, you went to a, ano, you went to a community, tapos may fiesta, tapos mag research ka. People will not, it's either people will be too busy to entertain you kasi fiesta, or they will give you two positive answers kasi in the festive mood sila. So iba naman ang data makuha mo. Of course, kasama sa data collection, process changes in what? Were there changes in settings, changes of use ng actors, so on and so forth. Okay, so kasama na ang process dito. Of course, in your data collection, ano yung process din of how you collected your data? Wait lang. Okay, ato pa. Indicate the type, type or types of data. Field notes ka ba? Kasi when you do observation field notes, ang gagawin mo, you have a notebook or papers, marami ka in short, marami kang isasulat. Um, as you observe, for example, when you went to uh, when you visited this community, you made field notes na at yung culture ng mga babae, at yung culture ng mga bata, anong time yung mga bata pumupunta sa school, what do parents do, what do the mothers or the fathers do, the older siblings do if the children are going to school, which school do they go to, so on and so forth. Lahat ilalagay mo yan. 
if may mga comments, extra comments sila during your observation, you have to write that down. Field notes heavy, especially sa ethnography, heavy sa field notes ang ethnography. Okay, interviews. Mostly open-ended questions so that you get more, you get richer data. Focus groups. Okay, you can ka din mag-focus groups, for example. When you're dealing with, ano, when you're, when you're, Topic is a bit sensitive, and the participants prefer to make a samasha. Pwede ko pwede yan actually focus groups. Um, you you assign a group, you assign siguro a schedule, si group one, group two, group three. Parang ano siya nag facilitate ka ng group. Okay, you can ask each and one of them. Yung parang yung parang in my case kasi interview. Pero pwede ako mag focus groups if I want. Ang gagawin ko if I wanted focus groups. I will put them in a room, lima sila, ask them about their stories one by one, okay? There are, and I also have mga questions for them as a group, questions as an individual, okay? So, pwede ka din mag-focus groups, especially if gipit ka sa time. Or may iba naman, ang ginagawa, focus groups then interview. Focus group sila, they ask the group, etc., etc., tapos ini-interview nila yung mga extreme cases. If may nakita sila very interesting doon, they schedule an interview with, its, with that certain participant. Okay. Documents. Okay, what kind of documents? Private or public documents? Ako, I had a mix. Mix ang ano ko. Mix, pero heavy sa private. Why? I had to look at their... I had to look at their, ano, I had to look at their records sa NDRC. I had to look at their record, their hospital records. Kaya private siya. Mostly heavy sa private. Public data, um, this will be sa NAAA na book nila. Yung mga, even their files sa NAAA, hinanapan ko. Because in, in what way nakatulong ang meeting sa kanila? So yun, if you're dealing with private, if you're dealing with private documents, Always ask permission. Of course, I had to ask info, information from my boss. Na, na sir, can I, ano, can I, tawag nito, can I, due, uh, due to the nature of my study, I need this, etc. Et you have to be transparent to them para magpaalam ka. Anong information ang hahanapin mo sa kanila? Do you need their medical documents? Do you need their psychological assessment? The documents during the time na gumagamit sila or during the time na sa rehab sila, their family background. So you have to really ask permission. Not only from the gatekeeper ng documents or ng records, but also to your participants. No, Ask them na, sir or ma'am, can I access your documents? Can I look at your documents? Uh, records mo sa NDRC? If they're yes, then go. If wala, then do not force the issue. You can just simply put, pwede mo nang ilagay doon sa record ninyo that limited lang ang naging access ninyo to documents because participants decided not to have their documents um, tawag na to open, be open for be open for studying, be open for nito, note taking. Okay, of course, you have your audio, audio and visual material, photos or videos. Again, when, when he can photo videos, please ask permission. And kung pwede, hindi makita ang mukha ng ibang ano. Especially in my case, ako hindi ako nag offer photos and videos because these are very well known people. Eh. Okay, so if I put it in my research, I will be doing more harm than good. Kasi kilala to sila eh. One of the panel knows actually who is, sino yung isa kong participant. Pero buti na lang, nothing, wala naman. There's nothing happened. Kasi I open it up to my panel na si ganito yun. Kasi sinabi na niya eh. Ah, si ganito ba yung isang ano mo? So sabi niya, she assured me naman na, kasi researcher din siya, she assured me that, that do not worry, Miss Wong, kasi ato siya will actually, we want to also contact this person so that this person can help us in our addiction program. O oh, ba? So parang nakatulong ka pa. So after the research, actually when I left for Davao, there's this, ano, there's this small office in Ateneo uh, in ADU that actually caters counseling that actually caters for addiction participants, addiction clients. And one of the participants na interview ko helps with the program. 
So parang it feels good no na, that because of that research na ka, you know you were able to help kay maliit lang role mo but you were able to help um, bring about that program. Okay kasi when when one of the panelists knew because she was also a researcher knew that she ato pala yung in interview ko sabi niya, can you please tell him na ganito ganito to contact me so that we have this you know we have this tawag na ito, we have this program to help students who are you know in addiction and true enough you know the ongoing ongoing ang program nila okay so that is one of the you know, one of the beautiful fruits of your research okay ano pa? okay data collection plan and approach for data recording Ato na, di ba? Uh, if you've noticed, you ask for your if you ask for the demographic background of your client or client naman, of your respondents or participants. Use an interview protocol for interviews. Anong gagawin mo? Ano to mga protocols? These are your instructions. Dapat may instructions ka. You have it all prepared. Instructions, questions, space for recording and comments, notes. Sige, for example, sa main thesis. Sige, so I'll be, ano lang. I don't know if you can see my screen. Sana yun. Is it here? Okay. Sige. So this is, for example, ato yung ginawa ako. The interview questions I had. And these interview questions, I had to look for three, three prof professionals to review them. Okay. So... Atin question item, how do you see addiction? Anong pa yung mga possible prompts mo? How has this manifested in your previous drug history? So review summary, ato yung mga validators. So Dr. Posadas wanted to have a more specific question regarding their etc. etc. So ang edits ginawa ko, instead of how do you see addiction, so as a recovering person for 10 years now, for etc. etc. Looking back in the past, what happened during your drugging days? Or what happened during your you know, your addiction days. So you see, up to yung ano, up to yung question, it was edited because there were validators. There were, ga, may ga, ga rate, may ga, ano, may ga, tawag na to, ga review sa questions. You have to also do this because it will save you. Pag mali ang questioning mo, it will actually save you. What were the physical, emotional, social changes? So, one of them suggested, irritate mo para mas maintindihan na nila. So, ang nangyari is, what were the physical emotional changes during dragging days? Okay. Possible prompt, ano mga possible prompt? So, if they answer, ano mga possible follow-up questions mo? You also have to write that down. Okay. Sige. So, is this clear? Nakita niyo naman to. So, meron to siya. So in case, just in case, you, ha you have to predict ahead of time naman din. So just in case, tingnan na, napansin nyo, there was a question for, uh, for example, if they, if they under, if they, if dumaan sila sa rehab, underwent rehab treatment, okay, kung voluntary sila pumunta sa isang rehab treatment, this will be their question. At what point did you seek for treatment? Pero pag involuntary, you know, sabi ng family nila, sige, hulihin nyo tong anak ko, ilagay natin sa rehab. This will be the question. What made you realize that you, there is a need for the treatment? That the, Realize the need for treatment. Iba kasi to eh. And remember, the reason I have predicted this is because of RRL. It's because of my experience. Hindi lahat pupunta sa rehab once to go to rehab. Hindi lahat ng pupunta sa rehab once treatment. Most of them are actually involuntary. Nagets niyo, so that is why there's a need for RRL. Okay, sige. Oh no, sige. I'm going to look for it na wala ako. Sige, I'm going to ano run through this naman din. 
Ito mga interview protocols ninyo. Instructions, questions, space for recording comments. Yes, I also had that. Mag-print kayo, for example, when you do interview. Respondent one, ano yung ano niya? Respondent one, you have question number one, answer and comments. Answer and, and tawag nito in observation. Do you smile ba siya? Lethargic ba siya? Ano yung mga na-observe mo while he is answering the interview question? Willing ba siya? Sarcastic ba siya? So on and so forth. Saang part siya naging sarcastic? Saang part siya naging lethargic? Saang part siya naging happy? Is he proud of the recovery, etc.? So you have to make notes. So record interviews, you can handwritten notes. Mas maganda pag handwritten. So you can review them. Kasi, kasi ang mangyayari, if, he, if during the interview you do not create notes, uh, you do not write notes, what will happen? You will forget about them. And when you forget about them, data is lost. So ako, kahit may recorder na ako, okay, kahit may recorder na ako, I still, uh, I still, uh, anong tawag na to? I still, I still wrote um, behavioral notes. Kahit mag-videotape ka. Kasi, what, what, what you call this? Kasi at least, pag mag-videotape ka, there, uh, there are already mga initial observations that you have taken note of. Because for sure, pag sabihin mo, ah, sige lang, I could always review the video, I could always review yung na-record ko. Eh, what if nakalimutan mo? And that actually happens. What if nakalimutan mo? So, sayang yung, ano, sayang yung mga nakita mong details during the first interview. Okay? Plan your transcription. Look for, ato, data storage. Data management. That's why I gave you the QDA minor so that hindi na kayo mahirapan in organizing your data in your coding of teams. Okay? Who will transcribe? For sure, in your first, first, ano, but if you want to be able to do thematic analysis, dapat kayo magtra-transcribe. Pero if you're already working, you have a family, tapos nag-aaral ka pa, nag-PhD ka pa, nag-masters ka pa, wala naman, it's not a big, it's not a big, ano naman, it's not a big tabu if, if sa iba mo ipapagawa. Sa atin lang, if ipapagawa mo sa iba, make sure you review your transcription, make sure you review it many times on your own pace. Kasi, that, at the end of the day, that is your responsibility. So, ato, sige lang, I'll go through this kasi it's already 9.30. So, data analysis. Organize and prepare data for analysis. Bring folders. Bring envelopes. Okay? Bring, you know, a lot a bag for your, ano, for your papers, for your documents. A lot a folder. Ayusin nyo talaga lahat ng files ninyo. Ato, interview. Ato, transcription. Ato, data analysis. At to inform consent nila. Kasi trust me, ang daming papel niyan. If, mas marami, if maraming papel sa quantitative, mas maraming papel din sa qualitative. Okay, because you need to take care of your data. Step two, read through all the data. Writing notes, ato mga writing notes and margins. Kung habang nag-recording ka, you write notes talaga. You should, hindi lang sa margins, but there is a space. May space ka for your comments, observation. Okay? Read through the data many times as if you need to. Because, if hindi, like I said, pag hindi ka familiarize sa data mo, you will forget certain items. You will forget important information. Kasi ano mayayari dyan? When you go to, across your data, when you go across your data, May, ma oh, may, may makikita ka new team na, na you, you forgot to include kay respondent number one. So, ano mangyayari? Babalik ka na naman kay respondent number one. If you're not familiar with your data, you will forget na meron si respondent number one pala nung data na yon Mawawala, for example. Natapos ang kay respondent number one. Respondent number two, I discovered there is actually recovery. There is actually recovery with family. If nakalimutan ko kay respondent number one ang mga accounts niya about family, then hindi ko siya ma-co-code. Hindi ko siya babalikan kasi nakalimutan ko, hindi ako familiar. I might just say, eh, wala man. You know, just because nagmamadali ako. So, what will happen? Sayang ang coding. No? And when sayang ang coding, uh, sayang yung team, there should be a team pala 
that will help you help you capture recovery and family pero since you forgot about the evidences na kalimutan mo siya hindi kasi hindi ka na na familiar sa data mo then sayang wala for most probably hindi mo magagamit ang team all because you forgot na meron pala sa data mo all this time so step three begin detailed analysis with a coding process organize it categorize your code first okay then you link before giving meaning to the data so ano mo na category go mo na kayo ng codes then you categorize them label them so ang mangyayari niyan when you transcribe for the last week of ano for the last week before your finals puro transcription ibibigay ko uh, transcription ng ano niyo and thematic analysis short thematic analysis ang gagawin niyo is you transcribe after transcription lahat kayo magka-code after magko-code, you all meet together, decide and agree upon the codes. Okay? When you agree upon the, upon the codes, finalize na ninyo lahat ng codes, you try to link them together. And when you link them together, you try to look for the RRL, you try to discuss. Diba? Step four, identify yun na. Identify the teams yun yun na coding process. Five, advance how the description and teams will be presented. How are you going to present them? Anong, anong link nila? Anong link ni team 1 to team 2? If there is a process, sinong team mauunang i-present? Sinong second team mauunang i-present? Okay? Interpret or make meaning of the data. Okay? Interpret or make meaning of the data. After you have organized everything, Doon yung interpretation mo. Doon yung discussion mo. Remember that data analysis for qualitative is an ongoing process. Continuous reflection siya. Babalik at babalik ka talaga sa data mo. Always ask analytic question and write memos throughout the studies. Hindi kasi napansin nyo, hindi talaga siya steps. Na step 1, 2, step 5. Although nakalagay dito step 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. Pero, pag quality ang gagawin mo, you always go back to step one. You can actually even be stuck in a certain step. In short, babalik ka ng babalik. Nagiging cycle to siya. Okay, after step six, step one ulit. Tignan mo naman ulit kung okay ang mga interviews mo. Familiarize, did you, did you miss something? Ang saya. So, uh, for the quality in qualitative research, medyo nga fast track lang ako ha, kasi it's already 9.30. Okay. Importance of fit, ato talaga yung titignan natin na quality. Okay, kasi quality, the quality and qualitative data. Okay, importance of fit, integration of theory. Does the theory, you know, the bigay mo ba justice ang theory? Was it properly integrated in your qualitative data? data? Reflexivity, this is when you have to admit that as a researcher, may mga biases ka. You have to list down all your biases. You have to list down your biases and acknowledge that these biases can affect your study. And you have to be open to that sa qualitative data. For example, um, drug drug use and abuse ang topic mo. Pero may negative ano ka, may mga negative biases ka sa recovery on drug addiction. You have to let your audience know, you have to let your readers know about that. That is reflexivity. You also have to acknowledge that. So that when the readers are, ano, when your readers are looking at your research, at least alam nila na medyo, ano, na, you know, you're doing your best not to let your biases get the best of you. You're doing your best not to let your biases affect you. And at least when you do present your data, at least alam nila may bias ka. At least alam nila ano yung knowledge mo. At least alam nila ano yung mga perceptions mo. Because the data is at the mercy of your hands, is that the mercy of your knowledge. Okay. Documentation. This is very important. You need proof na na-document mo ang mga records. You need proof na na-document mo ang mga, may mga pictures ka, mga, mga videos ka. But of course, when, with pic pictures and videos, you just blur the faces. <coughs> Excuse me. Theoretical sampling and negative um, case analysis. At ang theoretical sampling, do not be, ano, do not be confused. Kasi para siyang purposive, but it is not purposive. Ang theoretical sampling is, from the data, you interview, you interview, may research question ka, you interview. Tapos, during the interview, from your data, you try to 
create a theory. From that theory, those may join, how about while analyzing your data and your theory, you try to look for more samples, you try to look for more respondents based on the direction of your theory. For example, um, stress level of nurses, stress level of nurses. You interview nurses. Ang so far, na-interview mo mga nurses pa lang yung mga older nurses. Kasi yun ang gusto mo. Ano yung mga, anong stress levels? Ano yung ginagawa ng mga older nurses? Age 30, siguro yung mga 10 years na working as a nurse. You're curious, how, how are they managing their stress? Then eventually, when you were studying your data, theoretical, like theoretical sampling ka, when you're studying your data, your theory, you notice that, you notice a theme na parang mas ano pa, mas, the older you are, the more, for some reason, the more, the better rather, the better you handle your stress. The nurses uh, handle their stress better in terms, uh, anong tawag neto, as they are older. In short, age is a factor. Napansin mo, age is a factor. So you started with nurses who work for 10 years, but theoretical sampling ka, based on your theory, based on your findings, you look for a different set of participants so that your theory, so that they will follow the direction of your theory. So for example, ang direction ng theory mo is age has a age as a factor in stress management. So from interviewing older, ano, older nurses, you look for nurses na bago lang nag start. You look for younger nurses. After looking for younger nurses, interviewing them, you look at your data again. Anong nang direction ng theory mo? Okay. So if ang direction ng theory mo is to um, is to interview yung mga boss na Manila, then that will be your direction. Napansin niyo what you, napansin niyo there's the change of your sample. Parang you're, you're trying to you're parang the sample you're trying to look for your sample that depends on your theory on the theory that you are building diba okay pa kayo sige so taposin ko lang to then we will have a 15 minute break ang negative case analysis naman kasi in in interviewing in interviewing meron talaga uh, there are chances if you're lucky there are chances may negative case analysis may mga deviant case for example you want to interview you want to know if if ang bata or if a teenager or if a, rather if an individual okay has more preference for k-pop if they were exposed to k-pop at a younger year for example may ang ang ano mo um, respondents mo these are young adults mga 20s sige sabihin natin 20s tapos all of them in interview mo sila, all of them actually have exposure to K-pop at an early age. Siguro at the age of five, na exposed na sila to K-pop at the age of six, kanyan. Then there's this case, na exposed siya to K-pop, pero ang interview niya is, he, she doesn't like K-pop. He doesn't like K-pop. So what do you do? You do not disregard that negative case. Why? Because you continue to analyze their case, yung deviant na case na yan, because you will actually learn a lot from that case. In what way? What do you mean by learn? You might have teams that could actually support your, that could actually help analyze the data. For example, when interviewing, for example, when you were interviewing, your ano when you were interviewing that deviant case na you know at the age of 3 pa siya na exposed to K-pop pero wala namang hindi naman mahilig sa K-pop you then you then realize you then discover that this person is only is only exposed to K-pop for one year then pumasok sa mind mo pumasok sa, then you had this eureka moment na hala is uh how about the years uh the time how long is the exposure? Is it a factor? So, nung nakita mo, months lang siya, year, one year lang siya na exposed to K-pop. So, you you began interviewing, you began looking for the exposure. How long were these um, participants exposed to K-pop? Napansin mo, this person did not really like K-pop. It's because one year lang siya and eventually, wala siyang exposure. But when you look at your participants, 
they were actually exposed for 10 years. Exposed, continuing exposure nila for K-pop. That is why a fan sila. So, nagets niyo, it's because of that Deviant case na nakita nin, that you were able to analyze your data better. Nakakode kayo better. You discovered factors that were important in your analysis because of that Deviant case. So, if may nag-go against, if may, if there's someone na ibang sagot niya, do not throw the data. Do not throw their data. Because that could help you. Kaya yan ang tinatawag nilang negative case analysis. Okay? So if someone is against, someone is, you know, not agreeing with you, huwag niyong palagan. Kasi that's actually an important source of data. It could actually help you analyze the others more. Yun pala, you just realize that hindi pala, it's not only a factor, it's not only um, exposure at a young age, but it, uh, but the time, the years, the months that they're exposed to certain, to K-pop or J-pop is actually an important factor. And you were not able to see that while you were analyzing the others. Nakita mo lang siya thanks to the negative case analysis. So, di ba? We have to, ano, we have to be creative then. We have to um, make use of our data. Sensitivity to nego negotiated realities. Remember that, kaya ano napansin niyo the term here is neg negotiated realities. It's because each and every one of us, iba-iba ang perception natin. Okay? So, kaya siya negotiated because ikaw researcher, you're trying to explore. You want to capture the reality of this participant. Pero we cannot fully do that. We cannot 100% capture the realities of our participants yeah, negotiated siya. And that is why in some qualitative uh, research, mas maganda kung babalikan ninyo ang client ninyo. Babalikan ninyo ang participants niya And you ask them, tama ba ito? Uh, tama ba itong pag-capture ko? Tama ba itong pag-analyze ko? Because you're trying to enter the reality. There's negotiate, ito mga negotiated realities. You must be sensitive. Always ask yourself, did I do justice sa sagot ng client ko? Ay, ato namang client. Did I do, do justice sa sagot ng participant ko? And of course, transferability. Um, we all know na hindi pag qualitative, medyo weak siya. Medyo weak siya in terms of general. Uh, medyo weak siya in terms of external. Okay, because we cannot actually generalize our findings. Diba? Because why? You only have five. You only have five respondents. You cannot apply that immediately to a million. Pero, anong tawag nito? Pero, it is our responsibility to present qualitative research in a way that our readers will actually be able to use the information. Sa binabasa nila, use that information galing sa research natin and be able to apply that in their daily lives be able be able to apply that in their as the, uh, in their social life so if a qualitative data is beautifully constructed you have given justice na capture mong rea reality nila then that's a responsibility na ng reader si reader na bahala to make judgments on your data on your research okay that is why we have to be careful Kasi pag maganda, pag maganda, if there's quality in your qualitative research, maganda ang pagka-word mo, you are able to capture the experiences of these people, you are able, you, you are able to capture, um, you are able to capture the, the, tawag neto, the essence of their experience, si reader na ang bahala mag-judge niyan. Okay. So, as much as possible, we also do our best. We also do our best, you know, to, ano, to give justice, to get the essence of the research. Sige. So, ano na lang to? We're just going to, ano, go through. Almost done. Validity, quality, in, and qualitative psychology. So, you know, always be sensitive to the context. Okay? Be sensitive to the literature, method, to the data. To the social cultural, when you interview, do not forget ang history ng client. Do not forget, okay? Do not forget the context, the history context, the social context, the cultural context. 
why do you think, for example, if ganito ang behavior ni client, try to understand. Go back, look for RRL. In terms of culture, you can ask them. You can ask other people. Ano yung culture ng mga ganito? You can do research on their culture. Also, do the relationship between researcher and participant. Be sensitive to that. Commitment, pati commitment, figure transparency, coherence. You have, tawag neto. You have to also, anong tawag neto? You have to also observe. You also have to take note the degree of engagement ni, ni anong tawag neto, ni participant. Thorough ba, inter, uh, thorough ba ang data collection mo? Is your research clear and detailed? Anong logic ng, were you able to capture, were you able to present the logic in their arguments? And of course, anong impact and importance ng research mo? Okay? Kasi, at, of course, like I said, at the end of the day, we want our research to help others. Mahirap naman nag spend you spent one year doing research tapos wala naman palang impact. So that is why a lot of your panelists, that's why a lot of your panelists, your mentors, they really, they really push you to keep thinking. They really push you to change your research question. Kasi why are you going to explore something that has already been explored? So it would be better sa qualitative, especially pag qualitative gamit mo, you explore things that have not yet, not yet been explored. Okay, in my case, I tried during during the time na grabi yung mga ano, yung grabi yung drug war, grabi ang ano, grabi ang mga cases sa uh, drug addiction. I wanted to give a voice, no, that recovery is possible. Okay, based from the participants who are actually living their lives free from drugs. So what, and hopefully this could actually, pag uh, matulungan ng ibang ano, matulungan ng iba, that recovery is possible, hope is possible. You know, pag, kasi ang problema kasi sa addiction, addiction is re reoccurring eh. Walang treatment ang addiction. What do you mean walang treatment? There's no medicine that could just, you know, make addiction go go away. Even if you're sober for 10 years, pwede ka pa mahulog when you use drugs again. It can go back to the cycle of addiction. Kaya may term dyan relapse. Next. Reliability. Um, how consistent. Um, ano, how consistent ka sa data collection. Consistent mga questions mo. Okay. Consistent na results mo. You know, uh, are, your soul, are your results um, uh, tawag nito, good ba ang generalizability? Or can your results generalize? Okay on others, pero this tends to play a very minor minor role in quality because remember, we only have a few cases, few participants. Validity is the strength of quality, but it means accuracy of the findings from the, stand, from the standpoint of the researcher, the participants, and leaders of the account. Okay, so this is very important. How accurate are your interpretations? That is why you go back to your participants, you ask family members, you interview, you keep interviewing family members, you hold a lot of interview schedules because you want accurate on findings mo. Because the data is at the mercy of your hands. Okay? We need to do justice sa effort na binigay ni participant if we want to convince our readers of our research. Validity is equated with trustworthiness authenticity and credibility of course no one wants to read ikaw participant what if ikaw ang participant tapos mali mali ang pag-interpret that's actually wala wala na yung trustworthiness niya wala na credibility niya no one will read your research no hindi pa backed up by rrl mali mali pa pag-interpret or pag nag-interpret ka, wala namang RRL. Nag-interpret ka, wala ka namang, ano, hindi maganda ang discussion mo. There is no trustworthiness, credibility, thus, mababa validity ng qualitative research mo. Okay? Almost done. Punting push na lang. Sige, strategies for checking accuracy. Uh, triangulate your data resource, data sources. Ito na yung sinasabi ko. Triangulate them. Interview, do journal activities, you look for data, you look for their records, you ask other people, okay, triangulate kung tama ba, make sure, is it consistent ba, kung consistent ba ang data mo from the participant, consistent ba with the family, consistent ba sa records niya, consistent ba sa ibang tao, 
consistent ba sa journal activities niya, consistent ba sa surveys, consistent ba sa assessment niya, triangulate your data sources. Well, because remember, in interview, pag interview lang yan, there's a possibility na nagsisinungaling ang client mo. There's a possibility na nagsisinungaling si participant. And it is our responsibility as the researcher to triangulate and validate our sources. Check back with the participants. Yun ang sinasabi ko. There is nothing wrong with checking back with them. Mas actually, they will even feel better na binalikan nyo sila to make sure na hindi mo ma-misrepresent or ma-misinterpret ang sinasabi nila. Use rich, thick descriptions to make readers share the experience. So, ang sa qualitative kasi, dapat magaling ka in writing stories. Magaling ka with words. Because you have to make the reader be engaged. Dapat engage dapat si reader habang nagbabasa. It's like they're reading a story, but this is actually real life na nangyari. Okay? Kasi if, para, if ang dating nyo lang is like quantitative, maboboard si reader. Kaya nga qualitative. The quality. You go deeper in the reality. You want your reader to share the experience that you had. Okay? Clarify your biases, reflections. Yun nga, reflexivity. Present negative information that runs counter to teams. You have to be credible. You have to be transparent. May isang client, may isang participant, para sa kanya, hindi ganyan ang recovery. Para sa kanya, it's still okay to drink alcohol. It's still okay na mga babae. Basta hindi ka lang gumagamit ng drugs. You still present that and you try to discuss. Okay, kasi when, um, if you're going to, if I'm going to base recovery from the standpoint sa addiction, it's also, ano eh, it's a wholesome transformation. Um, for them, hindi pwede yung hindi ka lang gumagamit ng drugs. If you want to, uh, if you want to, tawag na ito, start recovery from addiction, dapat ugali, kasama din ang ugali. Yun din ang principle ng mga participants ko, kasama ang ugali. Hindi pwede, hindi pwede hindi ka lang gumagamit, pero ang ugali mo, addict. Diba? Ang ganda ng ano nila. Ang ganda, the way they say it, it's really nice. Recovery is not only not using drugs. Okay? Because what is recovery when you are still, when the way you, when the way you behave is like an addict? So ang nangyari, tinanggal ang drugs mo, but you are still the addict in you. Diba? Ang ganda ng pagka, pagka ano nila, pagka, pagka express nila ba what recovery is. Okay, so you so do not be afraid to present negative information because, like I said, that will help your analysis. And mas open tayo, open sa credibility, open at least we are transparent. Hindi natin tinatago si hindi natin tinatago to si participant na to. Okay, spend for a long time in the field. Okay, you go out there, gain in-depth understanding of the phenomenon as a person to review. At to always have your panel, your mentors review. Always and ask questions about the study. Ask an external person to review the entire project. That is why you have your mentor. You have your validators. You have the, your reviewers and your panelists. So that ano pang help or ano pang pwede mong mapolish, they will help you identify it. Sige. And the reason this is very important kasi... When I had my final, when I had my final defense, it was overwhelming. You know, medyo overwhelmed ako, I was anxious. So while, <laughs> I want to share lang kasi, in all honesty, kasi ako lang isa nun. When you're in a master's, ikaw lang talaga isa nun. Kagawa ng research mo. Well, after, after they have, ano tawag na to, after they have, um, to, after they have, hindi naman sa attack, pero yung ginisa ako ng buhay, ay, Pao, Miss Wong, kulang ko lang dito. Can you please add this, add this, add that? I cried. I cried in front of them. So parang, para, sabi, buti na lang. Since they, these are psychology researchers. Sige lang, catharsis mo yan. Sige lang, we understand, we understand na. Nag-change ang view ko sa mga panelists. Sabi ng mentor ko, it's okay if you feel like this, Pao. Because this means that we allow the panelists to help us. We allow others to help us in our research. Because we have to remember, the research, this research, we are doing it for others. Hindi ito para sa atin. Hindi ito pwede na para lang makagraduate ta. 
we are dealing with information that could make or break other people. So after that, I just realized, na, hey, it's okay. Marami pa palang ako mga improvement, and that's okay. Because at the end of the day, this is the research. This is the research for my clients. It is this is not for me. Okay. Reflexivity. Ato nang sinasabi ko. You acknowledge your subjectivity. If you have mga biases, if there are things that you don't know, may mga ano ka, may mga preferences ka. You have to acknowledge that. Okay. And that is why it's better in a group. Because if you're in a group, you can actually tell, other, you can actually pinpoint to others, you can actually have different points of view. Okay, you can actually tell na ito, kasi versus pag isa ka lang na researcher, medyo pwede ka pa maipit sa biases mo. Pero if you have someone in your group, especially a devil's advocate, the one you who always, you know, who always looks for the, yung tipong, when you mean devil's advocate, it's not really a bad role in the group parang it it helps the group actually consider all points or perspectives for example sige okay na to lahat etc etc celebrate na kayo then yung isang kasama nyo hindi kulang neto what if ganito ganito so all of you may be may feel bad pero at the end of the day at least yung mga biases ninyo were questioned by someone na criticize ang mga biases ninyo because yes, we have to acknowledge that sometimes we forget, sometimes we look over details. So okay, na kung may devil's advocate dyan sa group ninyo, it's okay. Pero si devil's advocate, ano lang din, uh, let's use the proper words lang here ha, wag lang kayong mangaway. Okay? It requires awareness and the researcher's contribution to the construction of meaning. Okay. Ato na, we have to be careful of our personal reflexibility, how our own values, experience, identity, politics shape the research. Diba? As much as we want to be neutral, as much as we want to be uh, objective, we have to be aware. How can this, ano? Kasi pwede, in, and in your research, you can actually express this to your readers. Okay? Uh, parang disclaimer mo sa research mo ba? I have this, 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 this is my life story, etc. This can actually affect my research, how I see things. So you can put that as a disclaimer. But the epistemological reflexivity, how the research question refined, limited what can be found, how the design method constructed and the data, constructed the data, how you analyze your results. Ano yung mga limitations mo din? Okay, what defined, what made your, what made your, research the way it is and, and saan nang galing ang limitation. For example, if limitation mo hindi ka nakabalik sa family members, you have to put that. No, that an interview is only limited to your participants. Hindi ka na nakapunta sa, hindi ka na nakapunta sa family members nila. Hindi mo masyado na triangulate. You should put that as a limitation. And critical language awareness as reflexivity. How the words we use play a part in our meanings. That is why you have to be careful of your words. Okay? The way you construct the meanings, you have to be careful. Kasi pwede siya mag-misinterpret. Diba? Next. Almost done. And we are done, actually. 